Hello, I'm Representative Melanie Stambaugh, and this is my sister, Christina. We want to take an opportunity to thank Dave Ross and Kip Robertson at My Northwest for their article titled, Puyallup Lawmaker Fighting an Uphill Battle Against Dated Law. Christina is going to read this article, and I will share some commentary that can provide clarity for this situation. So, here we go. The youngest member of the state legislature is on a collision course with the Legislative Ethics Board, and she's not slowing down. Representative Melanie Stambaugh of Puyallup, 26, told the board this week that some of the 44 ethics rules she's accused of violating don't reflect advancements in technology. That is because the board is interpreting a 1994 ethics law which bans incumbents from using public resources for political campaigns. None of my legislative videos or legislative photos in the complaints were used for a political campaign, mine or anyone else's. There is a four-pronged test by the Ethics Board for determining use of legislative materials. The first is proximity to election, relevance to legislative issues, references to voting, and the tone and tenor of the communication. The materials posted on my public Facebook page fit within the requirements of this four-pronged test. Now, back to the article. The ethics law was created before the age of social media. The rule is intended to maintain access to public records while blocking the use of state resources in campaigns. Our state's Public Records Act explicitly says that in the event of conflict between provisions of the chapter and any other act, the provisions of the Public Records Act shall govern. I did not use state resources to further my campaign. The information I shared with my constituents was legislative in nature and only occurred during legislative session. These were public records and could not violate the Ethics and Public Service Act. Cairo Radio's Dave Ross points out that the 1994 ruling was focused on keeping state employees from doing campaign work. Right. Very different set of facts in those days, former Attorney General Rob McKenna responded. Back in the 90s, it was discovered that state employees were being used to videotape challengers and producing campaign literature using state equipment, McKenna says. I did not do any of that. All of my materials were approved legislative communications to my constituents. Someone in their 20s who has grown up with social media sees it as a standard of communication, Dave says. So embedding a video into a campaign website isn't something that is considered to be against the rules. The Supreme Court has stated that citizens must be free to use new forms and new forums for the expression of ideas. The civic discourse belongs to the people, and the government may not prescribe the means used to conduct it. To be exact, I did not embed any legislative videos or photos into my campaign website. The materials that I shared during legislative session are on my Facebook page, which was created in 2010, as a public journal of my activities. This page was created four years before I decided to run for office. Plus, embedding of video or photos already created at the state level doesn't incur additional expenses, he says. You're right, Rob. There was no additional cost incurred by the state. These materials had served their primary legislative purpose and were available as public records on YouTube.com. The problem, McKenna says, is the board found that because people could access the videos on Stambaugh's website, instead of being sent to an external source, is somehow misappropriating state resources. First, these are not on my website. They are strictly on Facebook. I would never misappropriate state resources. Washington state law demands that public information be available to the people. The people insist on remaining informed so that they may retain control over the instruments or the government that they have created. This external source linking cannot be done on all social media forums. For those of you who look to Twitter for updates, you can't get legislative video updates on Twitter. It won't work. On Facebook, you will only get a blue jargon link, which we are taught not to click on those because they typically send you to spam. So, if I tried to give you a reference of where the blue link would take you by, let's say, using a screenshot of my legislative video update and posted that photo with an Ethics Board approved link, that also would be a violation, even though it's taking you to an external source of YouTube.com. 
according to the Ethics Board rule, linking to any legislative photos on the publicly available Flickr.com is also unethical because the photo would be visible on the social media page. Keep in mind that these Flickr photos are tagged by the state of Washington as shareable, downloadable, and usable for commercial purposes. All of my photos in question had the commercial license tag. It is important for you to know that core political speech occupies the highest, most protected position under our First Amendment. Commercial speech is a second-class expression, and yet the Ethics Board is restricting my political speech of our government's affairs. This is unconstitutional. Lawmakers have been found guilty of this before. What sets the Puyallup native apart is that she isn't rolling over. Most legislators shrug and say, I won't do it again, McKenna said. Of course, the board could say if the intent of the law is not to give incumbents advantages over their challengers, the law still applies because the challenger wouldn't have the access to the content, Dave says. Oh, but Dave, the challenger does have access to this content, and they do use these videos against incumbents. These public records are available for public use. There is no login for access. These are publicly available. All of the public can use these materials. All of the public besides the citizen legislators. Having run for office myself, I had to pay for the photos I used, McKenna said. I agree. All of these photos that I used in my campaign, I paid for. I purchased 19 photos from the state of Washington to use in my campaign, and I purchased these photos prior to complaints ever being filed. The best argument the board can make is that we don't want to encourage legislators to have more videos and photos taken for future campaigning, McKenna added. None of the public records that I used, videos or photos, were to assist my campaign. The use of these materials were to inform my constituents of the action of the legislature during legislative session. As a legislator, I do my best to inform you of the action of your government. Though the ethics board says embedding a video isn't an exception to the law and that links to them is the standard, Stambaugh says embedding videos are important because links look like jargon. I believe that access to your government should be easily available. I take my job very seriously and communicate the action of your government in the most relevant means. My peers are on Twitter and on Facebook, and this communication does not cost the state. There is no violation of the Ethics and Public Service Act. Surely, this rule will be changed by the Legislative Ethics Board, but they want to punish me first. Make your voice heard. I ask that you continue to stand with me. Stand with me and tell your representatives and your senator. Tell the governor, your mayor, and city and county council members. Tell everyone that this government information is yours and it belongs to you. Contact the Legislative Ethics Board and tell them to dismiss these charges. Tell them to uphold the Constitution. Tell them to uphold the Public Records Act. We are days away from a decision being made. If we do not make our voices heard now, I will be tagged with these violations and a $220,000 fine. Now is the time to intervene and not stand silent. Thank you for standing with me. Information, Information is ethical. ethical.